This year is Doctor Who's 60th anniversary, and to celebrate, David Tennant has once again returned to the show. But this time it's different. And at the same time, it's not. In fact, it's exactly as expected. And that could become a major problem. Pop the kettle on and allow me to explain. Multi-Doctor stories have always been a part of Doctor Who. Ever since The Three Doctors aired back in 1972, when William Hartnell, Patrick Troughton and John Pertwee teamed up to defeat Omega. These stories bring families together across the generations. They connect the old parents who used to watch the show with the kids who are just starting to get into it. Even the grandparents can join in. That's how it is in most families, mine included. We all have our favourite version of the Doctor. Usually the first reincarnation we watch as kids. We're like baby birds. We imprint on the first Doctor that we see, and it's all the more meaningful because we know it won't last. But like baby birds, we eventually need to leave the nest and leave the show we once loved. It's all part of growing up, but inevitably we all return to Doctor Who in some way or another, perhaps out of nostalgia or curiosity, wanting to see how the show has changed and what the new Doctor is like. But you never quite feel the same connection. They aren't your Doctor. Also FYI, my favourite Doctor is Matt Smith. Probably because the first episode of Doctor Who I remember watching was The Time of the Angels. I'm really curious to know who was your favourite Doctor and what was your first episode? Let me know in the comments below. Doctor Who has change built into its fabric, but that's the beauty of the show. It has been around so long and changed so many times that no matter how much it succeeds or fails, it can almost always adapt to suit new audiences. But sometimes this is not enough. Sometimes things happen behind the scenes forcing a show to take a break. In fact, Doctor Who had to do just that back in 1989. The show was experiencing dwindling viewing figures and the decision was made to cancel the show. But that didn't last long. As the 11th Doctor puts it, if something can be remembered, it can come back. And come back it did. In 2005, Doctor Who made a triumphant return to the small screen with Christopher Eccleston as the new Doctor and a man named Russell T Davies writing from behind the scenes. After a successful season and reintroduction of the Doctor, Eccleston stepped down and in his place a new Doctor was introduced, played by the one and only David Tennant. Everyone fell in love with David Tennant in his first season. Not necessarily romantic love, although those eyes are dreamy. No, this was a deeper kind of connection. We fell in love with his character because beneath the surface we could clearly see his pain and anger bubbling through. This initially reached a peak at the end of series 2. When Rose was taken from him, he was devastated. The pair had been together through thick and thin, but Rose was forced to leave the Doctor and this pain he felt only grew as the show progressed. His anger at the universe for not allowing him to change the past to save those he loved. He was still focused on Rose even when Martha was travelling with him being oblivious to her for the most part. And this continued through his time with Donna, until he was left with no choice but to wipe her memory before those memories destroyed her. At this point he seems mostly numb to the pain, but he finally breaks during the waters of Mars, when he is faced with an impossible decision. Save people and change a fixed point in time, or once again let more people die and preserve the timeline. With a great deal of hesitation, he finally turns back to save the remaining crew members, and he becomes the Time Lord Victorious. He refused to let someone die no matter the consequences, and believe me, there was consequences. He knew he went too far this time and that his time was coming to an end. After a run-in with the Master, the Doctor sacrifices himself to save Wilfred. But before he goes, he has one last farewell to some of those he has travelled with, and even breaking the rules to go back in time to see Rose one last time before they met. He stumbles back to the TARDIS and reluctantly regenerates after stating that he doesn't want to go. Then with a flash, Tennant was gone and replaced by Matt Smith. I love the fairy tale nature of this era. The girl who waited with a scary crack in her bedroom wall like a monster under the bed, as well as the impossible girl who came into the world thanks to a falling leaf and is somehow scattered across the Doctor's timeline. But I'll leave that discussion for another day. What's most important here is towards the end of the 11th Doctor's run, Doctor Who celebrated its 50th anniversary. And guess who showed up? You see, the upcoming 60th is not even the first time that David Tennant has returned to the show. He returned in Series 7, and for the most part it was a massive success. A lot of old fans came back to watch this multi-Doctor story, but they didn't stick around. 
And that's where the problem lies. Shortly after the 50th anniversary, Peter Capaldi took over from Matt Smith, and slowly but surely all those returning viewers left, and the show slowly declined. So they gave it a major revamp. New showrunner, new cast, new music, new everything. And the general consensus is that it was awful. I don't have time to cover all of this era's flaws in this video, but if you have 5 hours to kill, I highly recommend this video by JXE. I've watched it twice now from start to finish and it is definitely more entertaining than series 11, 12 and 13. Anyways, the point is the show was now at its lowest. In fact, the show was almost cancelled once again. Are you starting to notice a trend here? You see, now we get to the main course of this video, the part you've been waiting for. Not to sound all timey-wimey, but history really does repeat itself, and I believe that can give us a good idea of what the future holds. Bear with me here. Let me know if this sounds familiar to you. Doctor Who thrives, then it dives, then it's cancelled, and then Russell T Davies brings the show back alongside David Tennant. Once again, Doctor Who thrives, then it dives, then it's cancelled, and then it is brought back by Russell T Davies alongside David Tennant. So from this trend, we can predict that the show will thrive and see record high numbers, but problems may start to arise when Shuti Gatwa takes over as the Doctor, and they will become especially evident when showrunner Russell T Davies leaves once again. If they don't have a clear plan in place for that inevitable day, then I can basically assure you that the show will once again return to conversations of cancellation, and by that point the show won't have Russell or David to fall back on. The spike caused by David Tennant's return will obviously give the show a massive boost, and I've got to commend them for being able to generate this much hype so far in advance. But what comes after that spike? Will they be able to hold on to that momentum and surf the wave? Or will the show sink back to the levels of Legend of the Sea Devils? Only time will tell. As I mentioned, I grew up watching Matt Smith's era. I loved the show so much that I collected hundreds of action figures, as well as countless magazines and posters. But even I checked out when Capaldi took over. After re-watching his seasons years later as an adult, I definitely have more of an appreciation for his episodes now. He's actually hilarious, like an old drunk man, but most of the jokes went over the head of my younger self. Oh, and that TARDIS set was incredible. You don't realise how good something is until it is gone. Another part of the 60th anniversary problem lies in the return of old characters. The most obvious example of this being the return of Palpatine in The Rise of Skywalker. Something I've already mentioned on this channel in my review of The Mandalorian Season 3, but I will reiterate, don't bring back old characters from the dead if it will damage their original appearance. This is something I'm glad they didn't do for River Song. Her story was tied up in a nice little bow during Capaldi's time as the Doctor, but fans, and myself included, really wanted to see her interact with the 13th Doctor. Although I would have loved to see this, since I believe she is the best character in Doctor Who, it wouldn't have made sense in her timeline, as she literally shows us all of the Doctor's faces that she knew, and 13 wasn't one of them. I'm glad they had restraint in this situation. Or maybe Chris just didn't think about that. But I'm not seeing that same restraint in this upcoming series. As you know, Donna had her memory wiped, so now in order for her to return, they must undo that emotional moment in order to bring her back, which may damage her farewell at the end of series 4. The same goes for David Tennant's return, but I think this is less of an issue, because unlike River or Donna, he didn't want to leave. That was literally his last words. The Doctor himself thought he had more stories to tell, and that he could have been so much more. And now we're getting to see if he was right. I'm extremely happy with how the 60th anniversary is looking. Tennant's version of the Doctor is loved for a reason, and I'm glad to see he's been brought back to the show with the proper grandeur he deserves. The trailers feel like a return to form with what feels like new updates every month and cryptic glitched advertisements for people to investigate. After half a decade of sludge, maybe this is exactly what the show needs right now. A return to the past in order to guide the future. I'm just concerned of where the show will go after. Shuti Gatwa seems to have an impossible task. He is being introduced directly after David Tennant's return. And not only that, but he will return on the first Doctor Who Christmas special in almost 10 years. 
But then again, maybe I'm wrong, and hopefully my concerns are misplaced. After all, Russell is back in control for now, and with great risk can come great reward. Unlike the Doctor, unfortunately I can't see the future. But no matter what happens to the show in the future, based on past trends and everything else that I've mentioned in this video, I don't think the show will ever die, even if it declines to the point of cancellation. Because if something can be remembered, it can come back. <laughs>